Hey everyone, I'm Poetic. I'm Fish. And we're the Wandering Food Dudes. And today we're here in uh, Ballard at Skull Beer Hall. Skull Beer Hall. Uh, to try some Viking food and mead. Uh, let's go ahead and... Ready for some stuff? Are you ready? Enjoy this it's wonderful really day. And uh, we have the here's outdoors. owner here uh, that we're going to interview. So here's our outdoor area, which is super awesome. We were here in the winter where it was freezing. And when we came in here, it was no longer freezing. It was just nice, relaxed, chill. Here's the owner. Here you go. And go ahead and give us your first and last. So my, I'm, I'm the queen. I'm the owner here at School Beer Hall. Awesome. And then actually go on that side real quick yeah. so you can get that mic there. So. I'm sure that you have the mic right here. Awesome. So we're here today. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, or so. I, or we could, I can hold it right between us. And that could However you want. However you want. And okay, here we go. So, first question: How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Good. Hey, well, it's a super hot day here too. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I was not expecting this, and then it's just earlier. I took a tumble, so it was just like my body temperature is up there. And this is the place to chill and relax ah, after yes. taking a tumble, which we're super excited about, which is gonna be awesome. So we're here. So actually, let's go ahead and describe everything we have here, so we can let people know. Sure. So, um, so what do we have? On this each? is one of our mead flights of. Uh, for those of you at home or aren't familiar with mead, mead is uh, basically fermented honey. It's honey wine, honey, yeast, and water. Uh, we've got three different options here from uh, local producers here in Washington State. Um, the first one is a traditional sweet mead from um, Melchemy Meads down in the Columbia River Gorge area. The second one is a black currant mead from Ethereal Meads that was actually made just for us. Uh, we've got nice. a special mead here. Uh, a little bit on the sweet side and then the last one is from Thunderland Meads up here in the Seattle area and that is a mixed berry rosé. Sweet, and what do we have here? And then uh, you've got an IPA from Old Schoolhouse Brewing Company over in Winthrop, Washington and that's in one of our Viking tankards so anyone who's part of our mug club drinks out of these um, specially made sweet. ceramic tankards, um, mm. 20 ounce pours. And what are you drinking here? And I am drinking a Danish Pilsner from Carlsberg. It's uh, super crushable for a, a 90 degree day like you've got. <laughs> <laughs> How much would it would cost for someone to get into your mug club? Yes, uh, there's two options. There's an annual um, membership for $60 and then we've got a lifetime option for 170 and Nice. And you're basically getting four ounces of free beer uh, every time you come in. And you also have first access to a lot of the events and um, different things we do here at the beer hall. We have Mug Club Mondays where you get 10% off your full bill if you're part of that. the Mug yeah. Club. There's a lot of great incentives to you know keep coming back and trying all the different rotating needs and beers that we have. And you were saying that the pottery is made and designed by yeah. local artists? Yeah, it's, uh, her name is Sherry Kirk from Sheet and Fire Arts. Um, it's actually down uh, near Mount Rainier. She does all of our, our tankards and we also have a bunch of her other um, pottery inside that we have available for people to take home and purchase. Oh, excellent. That's that's awesome. So what inspired you to do a Viking haul here yeah, in Seattle? Yeah, yeah. I'm Norwegian and Swedish. Um, I care very much about my heritage. And also, the history of this neighborhood has started as a Norwegian fishing village. Um, so there's a very strong Nordic population here in Bali. National Nordic Museum of the United States is right down the street here. I, I did not know that at all. <laughs> large, largest sons of Norway in the United States is here oh, wow. in Ballard as well. Um, I was the vice president of that for a number of years. So I, I care very much about the Nordic community here in Ballard. And uh, my background is in the beer industry. Nice. So I kind of wanted to bring all those things together. And, you know, we opened in 2019. And then the pandemic hit, and that was a lot of fun <laughs> and challenging. And we're still here today, and you know we're we're rocking on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you just said said it. Yeah, it's a huge challenge to survive the pandemic. What were some of the things that you guys did that uh, allowed you guys to, to do to do so? Sure. Yeah. So um, you know, I talked about the mug club. We have fifteen hundred mug club members, and nice. they were extremely supportive throughout the pandemic. With you know, there was a time where we could only do takeout. They would come in and they would order whatever we had available that day. Um, we started doing a lot of uh, feast options, so you could you know, take home a whole rabbit or a pheasant or chicken. Oh, nice. Uh, that is awesome. Um, trout, that is awesome. Rainbow trout. And we actually still do all of those things today that you can have as a dining experience. Um, and then, uh, you know, the city allowed us to take over actually the space that we're sitting in now, which is outside on the street. And we put this beautiful pergola up that we're in. And, um, yeah. You know, we have people out here in the dead of winter in Seattle when it's in the 40s yeah. or it might be snowing. and. You know, they're still kind of bundled up with their parkas oh, and they're yeah. at an open fire pit. Yeah, yeah. We, we were here, I think, uh, during the pandemic when it was like 
probably about 40 degrees, 40, 50 degrees. Yeah. And we were like, oh, let's we eat. we were perfectly warm with the Yeah, it, it was just, everything. It, yeah. literally, it was just amazing. Like, we came here, and I was like, oh, it's going to be kind of cold. Let's see how it is. We sat down here. But, like, the minute we stepped in here, like, it's weird because, like, it was it's pouring rain. And then out there, it was, like, it was cold. But then the minute you stepped in here, it was just warm. It was, like, the per it wasn't hot. It wasn't, like, it was just perfect. Yeah. And, and that's where, like, yeah. It's a Viking okay. and Norwegian beer hall, after all. So, you know, we're expecting yeah. people to be hardy and, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> suck it up yeah. and do well for us. Hey, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We, well, I'm, and I'm from, I'm from New England, so cold is, like, you know. It's easy for me, but like I came here and we like, oh my god, it was amazing. It was so just, you yeah. you mentioned everything was pretty much local to the area. How do you go about sourcing some of these things? Uh, so we actually, when we first opened, developed a lot of great relationships with all the local meaderies, uh, just because there aren't a lot of places that they can sell into outside of their own you know, tap room experiences. Yeah. Um, so we we actually know all the, about fourteen or fifteen of them here in Washington State. And we oh, do wow. mead, two mead festivals a year out here outside where they all come and. and that's awesome. sample everything. We're gonna have to do that. We're um, gonna have to come by. <laughs> so it's, it's a very strong, smaller uh, mead community that we're thankfully a, a, a part of. Um, and then there are 15 breweries here just in, in Ballard. Um, oh, wow. So we have great relationships with all of them. But what we like to do is try to showcase a lot of the other beer that's made here in Washington State just because all the Ballard breweries are in all the restaurants here. Uh, and there's a lot of great stuff happening up towards Bellingham and toward the Canadian border and you know to the south down to Olympia and all the way to the uh, Oregon border. So we, we, we try to showcase a lot of those um, in addition to the, the political ballots. I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah. The fact that there's such a strong, and you said a, a Nordic, uh, community here. That's yeah. something I didn't expect, especially in Washington State. Yeah, that's that's. It looks very, very you know. similar to Norway, with the right by the sea and yeah. the mountains, and it's kind of why they're allowed to settle in this area. Well, in one of the places that you guys have a lot of their product, Hardware Distillery, was talking a lot about that, about making sure that they go across the water and come back to the fords when they make each bottle or each yeah. barrel their yep. aqua Yep. Um, and man, you. At some point, you need to take a look at it because they they're they're a lovely couple. All right, nice. <laughs> well, also you brought up Akavit, which is a, another large component of what we what we do here. Um, it's from the you know, national uh, spirit of all of the Scandinavian countries. Uh, it starts as a neutral spirit, and then it's typically uh, infused with you know, dill, citrus. Um, but it's usually in the dill or caraway uh, flavor profile. Okay. And it changes based on which northern country that so you're kinda, in. So kind of herbal. Yeah, so what we say, uh, you know, what um, juniper is to gin, caraway and dill is to, to occupant. And um, there are uh, several producers here in Washington State that make it. And then we have um, a whole uh, catalog of um, occupants from Norway and Denmark and Sweden and Iceland. Nice, nice. And so, all of our cocktails are made with occupant as well. Excellent. See, that's, that's, that's good. So let's take, let's take a drink here because it is yeah. definitely very hot. And skull is appropriate. Skull. 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 Oh, man. I needed that. Okay, the mixed berry rosé. <laughs> yeah. I needed that. That, oh, that was so refreshing. Yeah, yeah this, this um, has a little tinge of the, the little, like, almost bitterness to it, but uh, with, also with the sweetness back and forth. Very refreshing. It's nice. See, I, I love I love my strong beer and my IPAs. It's just, especially after taking the tumble, this this takes away the feeling of uh, falling. Go. That's so, actually my favorite brewery in Washington State. They just do really? great stuff out there. Yeah, this is uh, just you know, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. We might have to look into getting into the mud club. It just, I really, after having this, it's like yeah, I kind of. They're great. Uh, I need to. <laughs> great job. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. So, so um, try the other. One. How do you like it? Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of this. So this is a, the black currant. That's you got a black currant. Black currants are. Um, a flavor profile that's used quite a bit in, in Nordic cooking and, and Nordic drinks. Oh wow! I don't think I've ever had um, black currant like that before. It's quite good. Um, and that's uh, one that was made just for us, and we've got our logo on the bottle, and uh, we have those for purchase that people can take home with them. Is that home. one? Is that a very popular one? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that smell. Yeah. And then the last one you've got is, um, when people think of mead, this is a traditional style mead, um, semi-sweet to sweet side. 
and that's from Melchemy uh, down in Carson, Washington. And they, they have a whole uh, lineup of, of different uh, flavors, and this is, I think, one of their, they do the traditional very well. Yeah, I like this one. This one I could drink off of. That would definitely I could drink off of. <coughs> and like you said, this is, this is the only place you can get it, right? Is it here? This particular one, yes. Yeah. So I just wish you have to come here more often, then. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a really good one. Ooh, that's strong. Yeah, so I See, that one has we a do more a fruity over smell, but this one is yeah. like very... I can't pick it up. I don't know. That one's basically just straight fermented honey. There hasn't been anything like, added to it. Oh, wow. I know. I'm not, I'm not like, if I had to choose between the three, this one, yeah, the custom one is just amazing. I could drink that all day, but then th I'd drink it like juice and I'd be done. <laughs> then this one and then this one. But this one, yeah, your yeah. custom one, oh my god. Yeah, so I can, you know, for people who are interested in mead, we do, um, you know, I think we're one of the largest retailers of mead in Washington State. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, we're doing a festival out here on October 30th, so we'll have 10 different uh, meteries here, nice. sampling all their needs. You kind of buy a ticket in advance, and you get a, a token for a two-ounce pour. And then we've got you know a special food menu available for um, this whole outdoor area. Okay. At that time of the year. Do you guys? Um, you ever thought about selling that by bottles, like individually? Or do you? Oh yeah, we sell that individual bottles. You, you do. Buy one okay. Inside. Yeah. Okay. We might in fact, we leave. All, all of these are available for purchase. We also try to sell um, as much um, mead bottles at retail um, for people who try, you know, in, in this fashion and then take one home with them. It's because they are very hard to find up here in the Seattle area. Um, most of these you cannot find in a grocery store or a liquor store. And yeah. we're the kind of one-stop shopping for that. Yeah, that, I'm definitely, now how much, um, how much do the bottles go for? This is a 500 milliliter bottle, I believe, for something in the, somewhere in the $40 uh, range. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, that's that's by far, I think mine is by far, that's by far my favorite. Definitely try that one, highly recommend it. Um, right now we're waiting for the food, so what is it that you ordered? Uh, so we ordered um, some of the meat platters, the Yeah, it's called our, our Jarl's platter, which comes with all of um, all of the grilled skewers that we have. Uh, we've got a large Viking sized pretzel coming out for us to decide if we want mustards or beer cheese or all of the above. And then we've got two of our shareable boards. One is seafood focused, and the other is um, cheese and charcuterie. Now, and you said that you were was the president or vice president of the Nordic Association in the area. Uh, did that really help you refine what you wanted your menu to be? Um, I, did you mostly wanted it like? shared platters and like more of a yeah, group the, activity? The, in, the intent of the whole space, um, you know, and this was pre-pandemic, was for right. it to be as uh, of a communal environment as, as possible. So, um, you know, even out here we still have long big tables. Inside is, is mostly you know, eight plus person long tables that uh, yeah, we're going to group to yeah. or, you know, we'll sit four here and two there and you might meet someone new and kind of, you know, have a great conversation over food and drink. Um, so yeah, the intent was to create a shareable uh, snack environment too. With, that's why I have a lot of boards on the menu. The pretzel that we have is one pound. You know, it's definitely nice. great for three to four people to consume. Um, yeah, that's a big pretzel. And then we've got some other kind of what we call Nordic tapas type uh, right. things that are good for sharing. So, so really, community is at the heart of not just your restaurant, but the, uh, the your culture. Absolutely. Mm. That's what's up. So we're gonna go ahead. And we're getting ready for the food, y'all. So as we get ready for the food, we're gonna go in and grab it. See what we got? Definitely. So we're gonna um, cut it right here. We'll be right back, so. We're back. We're gonna go ahead and show you guys what we got. We got a few things for food. We have the executive chef here. Hey, how's it going? I'm Hello. Chef John. Chef John. Pleasure to meet everybody. And go ahead and show us this first board. Yeah, of course. So right here we have our board of regards. This is uh, our charcuterie board. We have a pork liver pate, known as liver pastai. So it has a little bit of sage, a little bit of onion in there. Uh, Gothenburg summer sausage, very similar to a salami, but it's done in the uh, Northern European style. We have just a little bit more fat kind of blended in there. Oh, nice. uh, we have Prince Corv or Saucier, depending on which region of Scandinavia you're in. It's going to be a kind of a Vienna sausage done more in a Nordic style. So you're going to get a little bit of nutmeg coming through there, a slight bit of cardamom as well. 
well. Oh, very nice. 100% whole grain rye. We get that from Cafe Clatch up here in Lake City, so we're able to really uh, work with a lot of local purveyors, which is a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, Preskurko, which is a Swedish cucumber salad, lingonberry jam in the middle, whole grain mustard there. It's a very ancient and traditional um, rye crisp bread called Kanaka bread. It's literally named for the sound that it makes when it cracks. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, Donna Blue Danish blue cheese. Yetos, also known as Brunos, depending on which uh, country you're in. This is a uh, brown cheese. Similar preparation to a dulce de leche. They take the curds out and then caramelize down the way, so it's going to have like a sweet nuttiness to it. It's going to come out almost like peanut butter. Uh, last here we have uh, Togo. So Togo is a very traditional, it's been going since about 1660. It's a Swedish hard cheese. It's going to be a blend of cow's milk and sheep's milk. Uh, this is a brand that's coming out of an old um, bricklayers company. Oh, so nice. actually when they form the bricks, they have a little footprint in it because the bricks that they used to make, the kids would walk across them so to pay nice. homage to what it used to be. They've now done that with the cheeses. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> of course, over here we have our Nord board. We have the same different kinds of bread there as we do on the Board of the Gods. Same whole grain mustard and preskurka. We have some softened uh, butter there. Just whipped up to be able to spread. It really pairs with everything quite nicely. Nova Lox that we're getting out of uh, Bristol Bay. We have Idaho smoked rainbow trout with That's chives and a cream cheese dip. Ooh. Green lip smoked mussels out of New Zealand and then a pickled herring with uh, carrots and onions in it. It's a very traditional way to do it. Uh, it's done with a little bit of vinegar, spices, and white wine. Okay, so they, they pickled it in the vinegar? Yeah, okay. yeah it gets pickled in vinegar. And then it's uh, it's kind of like the cure all for oh my god I'm too hungover after too many snaps. <laughs> Let me get some uh, fish and electrolytes in me. Yeah, yeah. If you had to choose between all of it, what's your favorite? My favorite, crazily enough, is the Nordboard, the smoked mussels, and the trout dip are two of my favorite things. I try to put the trout dip on just about everything. So okay, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's that's the side of and then of course the toggle is we just kind of got this recently working with a local uh, cheesemonger, so it's really great to be able to feature it and it has that kind of. It hits almost like a pecorino. It's going to have some of those crystallized nice. bits in it. Um, and that's just from losing all that salt. I love pecorino romano, yeah. too. I was just using a few. I actually had a block a few days ago. So, Every now yeah. and then for snack, I'll it take a thing like put the oil on sounds like you guys occasionally rotate the cheeses that are on the board. Yeah, we rotate both our cheeses and our meats. Our meats are coming from uh, Scandinavian Specialties, uh, which is one of the last kind of really steadfast Scandinavian businesses in the area. Uh, we partner nice. with them, they make some of it in-house and then import a lot of it as well. So oh, wow. we get to have at least two to three different rotating meats that are coming in and out. That's awesome. the season. That's so awesome. that just tells you, you guys have to keep coming back to try more and more stuff. Exactly, things will always be just a little bit different. See that, that? See that sounds awesome. I can't wait to. I also saw that you guys had a lot of lamb on the. That's the gonna be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, of course, in a lot of Scandinavian and by uh, by by Viking era, would have had lamb and sh and sheep more as a resource than beef, just because of kind of the how easy it is exactly. to grow in the area. How easy it is. So um, we like to really lean into that. They would have used a lot of mutton to be able to not waste the product, but right. luckily we get a lot of lamb, and all of our lamb is actually coming from uh, Oregon. Uh, it is Anderson Valley Ranch, so it's all grass-fed lamb. That's just fantastic. I was gonna say it, it, may, it makes such a huge difference. Yeah. It makes such a huge, huge it's difference. So, it's so good. All, we work with a lot of local um, meat suppliers. All of our meats coming from either small source or uh, sustainably sourced. Awesome. Awesome. Mayor, so. And, so once again, it's all about the community here at, at Skull and about making sure that the we all thrive together by finding the local uh, restaurants and providers and. All those kind of things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome. We're gonna start trying stuff because I am. Yeah, dig in. We got ready for this. Up for you guys in just a little bit. Awesome. Excellent. And well, then, thank you. Of course. And then once it does come out, uh, whoever it is, we definitely want you to let us know exactly. Yeah. What it is because yeah, we'll, this just we'll looks. Do like, ten, like ten, fifteen minutes. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That's Excellent. oh, this just looks so good. Are you ready? Yes. Are you excited for yes. this? Yes. I'm excited. It's a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. We mentioned talk of it. I think you know the three of us can do it at the end. Yeah. Hey, we're definitely, definitely that we're down for that. Lovely. Yeah. Because yeah. um, any, any flavors you do not like. Uh, I don't know if I've had it. The Norwegian ones are very caraway so for itself. The cardamom like is very bread. strong. I think dill's my favorite one. Like it's not bad, but like it's, unless you're expecting the cardamom, it hits you in an interesting way. Um, but I think the dill, the traditional. You said it was dill's pretty traditional, right? Yes, yeah. So if you're talking the hardware one, they have yeah. One, it's just I definitely, I definitely feel like we definitely want to do. What I, I haven't had any that I know of, so I've, it's been new we for me. We, can, we do so, also do a, um, a 
tasting a sampler yeah. tray of... Because we definitely um, want to bring out the... Especially because you're telling us, you know, this is your actual culture, so we definitely want to bring the culture out of it. Even though we're not there yet, we definitely want to do I'll bring out two different trays at the end, and then we'll have a chance to send us. Yeah, awesome. that's awesome. Um, and especially since that's something so unique to you guys. So, yeah. And we're definitely the only people who are doing all of our cocktails out of it. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited for that. That's okay. awesome. Okay, great. Well, thank awesome. you. Thank you uh, so much. It's been great so far. So, sure. like, yeah, enjoy it. I'll be back out in a little bit. Appreciate it. Sure. So, we're going to start eating some of this. Let's get ready, y'all. And then... We're gonna eat a lot of food. Let's see how this is here. And this is, this is, see, hot, man, this food is just awesome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start <laughs> because, you know, why not? So I got a, the traditional cracker here because, you know, why not? Let me get my fork. Okay, first thing, you know what? I'm actually gonna grab a actual fork, like I said, not the knife. I'm gonna try one of the muscles because he said it was just phenomenal. So let's, let's start with the muscle here. Here's the muscles. Mm. Slightly smoked. Slightly smoked. Um, not over chewy, which is a problem a lot of people have when they cook mussels. They just overdo it. Yeah. Has some of the freshness of the sea still in it. I like that. Let's try it. It's smoky, but it, it still has yeah, it still has that muscly flavor, but it's, it has like a nice smokiness to it that kind yeah, of keeps a it. A light like, smokiness, some freshness to it. I love cucumbers. The cucumbers. I'm a cucumber whore. You get paid for it? Oh, oh. Always. Mm. And was this the spread that they were talking about? Yeah, that's like the salmon spread, and then this is the... The lox. The no, the lox no, is this one. The lox is that one. This is like a... Ooh. This is the pickle, the pickled one. Smell that. Oh my god, that is so good. Oh, bro. Smell. It's a pickled. It has this really good pickly. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that has a really nice soft tenderness to it. Um, and it bursts with like moisture. And flavor, but it's a very gentle, like it's not heavy on the, the fishiness. Yeah. And so, like, even people who aren't like big fish fans, I think would really enjoy that. I love how pickled it is. Yeah. Oh my god, that is so good. That right now is probably my favorite thing. That is just like perfectly pickled. Like, if you like, if you guys like pickled things, this is this is it. This is the. Mm. All right. I like the mussels. But the pickled uh, fish, a little bit of this uh, butter. butter. That is the way. Our pickled fish is the way to go, guys. That that is the that is just the way to go. Get some of the lox. So that one, we got uh, we got their bread here. So we're gonna do a little bit of. Uh, I'm gonna do some. Well, you know, I'm gonna put a little salmon first, just to try that by itself, and then I'm gonna put the the lox on it. I'm curious to see how that tastes by itself. Oh, the spread? Yeah. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. That's where it's at. Oh. That's where it's at. So that has a really it's nice, fire. creamy, yeah, I like chivey that. flavor to it. Um, Ooh. So you're getting, you know, cream cheese, you're getting the chives, you're getting a bit of the smokiness to it, a little bit of the fishiness. Um, it spreads really easy. I would, you know, we said he spreads out almost everything. I can see that. Wow. I can see that. Executive Chef was like, I use that on every, yeah, I can see why. That is just, that is super. And I like it on the cracker and on the bread. It's, it's just good on both. Mm -hmm. Well, let's try some of the locks, and then I'd be very curious to see how the locks adds to the spread on top, or uh, with the layer of the, the spread. So the by itself, that has almost a silky con yeah. um, texture to it. That's good. It's just 
Again, it's good. The smoky flavor. This is very traditional for the preparation method yeah. for the area, um, it's, it's especially for Washington in general. Smoking is well, a big Washington thing with and in Nordic uh, yeah. culture, which makes it just a beautiful smokiness to it. Just very it's relaxed, silky, very textured, silky, yeah. slightly fatty. Um, again, it's fishy without like it being super strong. So it's yeah. not like even like new people to fish would be sad and or uh, turn, turn off by that. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna try with both. Mm. That I do like it on it. It actually has a really good flavor to it, so the crunch actually helps big time. We're on a very busy street here in Ballard. Ballard's a beautiful location. So much to do here, so many good restaurants. If you're someone who likes uh, food, come to Skull. It's just, it's, it's good. So good. Yeah, that's just a good combination between yeah. the spread and the, and the locks. What I want to do, I'm gonna try some of this mustard on the bread and then put the salmon on. Let's try it, taste a little bit of this mustard first. Oh, yeah. That, that is good. That is just, yeah. Ooh. That's a nice lingering taste without being like super sharp, like yeah. a yellow mustard. Um, and then, of course, the, um, it adds to the texture really mm. nicely. Oh, wow. So that with the mustard is actually a nice taste. It's not crazy. It's like a, gra it's a grainy mustard. So now, now that you've worked through everything, um, on this board. Uh, uh, well, I mean, on that board, right? Like, which is still your favorite fish? Oh, by far, the pickles. I could literally eat this for a snack, dinner, lunch. Like, like I'm not stopping. Like this, the pickled one is just it's it's that good. Like, I have a really hard time choosing. Um, oh, this pickle all the way. This one and then the dip. I think I like the locks uh, the best. Um, just because of how much it reminds me of the smoked salmon that we have, the way that they prepare smoked salmon up here. I like the lots, but I eat it so often, it's like, it's good. Like here, it's a little bit different. It actually has an even better flavor. But in general, I eat lots pretty often. I used to eat it all the time, but if I had to choose, like, gun to the head, the pickled fish, oh my god, this is where it's at, y'all. The pickled fish tastes like heaven. Like, serious heaven. The mussels is probably my last thing. I like the mussels, because I eat mussels all the time, but it's probably less than good. It's like, it's just, it's that good. We have the executive chef here. What are you bringing us here? Yeah, uh, so we were talking about lamb earlier, so I just wanted to kind of show, we do a lamb sandwich out of this, because this is our take on, uh, Norway's national dish, which is called uh, Fortico. Uh, this is just braised cabbage. Can you, can you say the name of it again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fortico, F-A-R-I-K-A-L, but they have the, the circles over the, the top. Circles of over it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but this is their take on it, or our spin on it. We do it as like a braised lamb sandwich. Ooh. They do it traditionally as a stew with whole peppercorns in it, oh. and just layers of cabbage, salt, peppercorns, and then lamb on top. They do bone in lamb, so this is we're getting the. Uh, lamb leg, loin, boneless, and then slow roasting it overnight, putting it on top of a bit of sauteed cabbage, and then some uh, pickled carrots on top. Like I said, normally it's a sandwich, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little tasty taste of that. Oh, excellent. Because we were talking about the lamb, so. Yeah, and lamb, lamb has been one of my favorite things from all the different countries I've been to, so like, seeing it here done right yeah. is, is amazing. That's the thing, like, every culture use, utilizes lamb and goat in different yeah. ways to be able That's to, beautiful. like, there's such a... Such a good pack animal and such yeah. an easy animal to raise. So, and you weren't joking about oh, that wow. the spread and stuff. It's, like it, that's it, so smooth. It's fantastic. I'm from the East Coast and I love like. Wait, where are you from? It's, uh, Pennsylvania. I'm just like two oh, hours from the Philly. I'm, I, used to, I used to live in Philly. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm from Boston, but okay. I, I was in between Puerto Rico and Philly most of my family. Okay. In Philly. Yeah, I lived in a, I lived in Conshohocken for a bit when I was coming oh, okay. down to Philly, and then. Oh, shoot. Uh, so you know food. <laughs> born in uh, born and raised in Scranton. Uh, okay, yeah. I used to go there all the time. I have friends all there. I'm also oh, a East Coast guy. We're in Boston. I grew up in the Boston area. 
Yeah. For, I, well, I grew up. And then I was in North Quincy for seven years. Okay, so I, I was born in Holyoke. Then I, I, was, I moved all around Mass because my dad's military. So we lived in Worcester, Marlboro, Shrewsbury. Uh, God, we lived everywhere. Shrewsbury, very right close to Acton. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we live right there. Yeah, we live all over there. I, I went all. That's see, I knew I liked you guys. I knew I liked you guys. That's why we kindred spirits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We see, also that's me. You, you know what I'm saying? Ah, yeah. oh, thank you. I see. <laughs> we bring, we bring come the to East Coast West. <laughs> that's that's the way it goes. Meanwhile, I got stuck oh. in Foxborough for a month and a half after somebody hit me with their car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, get out. <laughs> yeah. I told them, I'm like, I'm like, it's a whole like people don't realize East Coast versus West Coast such a different culture yeah, it's right. such a different culture like it, there's no yeah it's you say how it is and that's it yep. you know, this by the but way also, the pickled oh my it's god good, right? so good it's just it my favorite spot it, it, it's, it's so just, good like i love the entire thing but this this the pickle it's just it's, honestly this is like so refreshing it is, it's like even it though is. it's all cured stuff it doesn't have that saltiness it's gonna yes. like, take you make you like thirsty yeah it's this yeah, i could literally eat every day and, i could literally and for eat a lot of people who aren't used to fishy fish yeah. stuff like you get the light smoke yeah and like you get the flavor of the fish without it being overpowering like most people dread when they, they yeah. get into especially smoked and preserved fish now do you guys sell this by itself we do not. Uh, we sell it like as a big plate. Yeah, yeah. So like a family portion of just that with uh, with the accoutrements on, on the side. Yeah. So That's you're gonna awesome. have me here often because this, <laughs> this. You understand? Know this is phenomenal. Like I a, love this, but this is just. We're doing yeah. another pairing. I love um, seafood. Though, so. 21st, I believe, where we're gonna be doing like three or four different types of that. So most places that you would go would have like a whole like smorgasbord of yeah. different varieties of pickled herring. So we're gonna kind of lean into that and do like three or four different styles. Do some open face sandwiches which are called s'more buns and things like that. So I have to uh, come back on down and check out one of those oh, events. Oh, oh yeah, no, and, definitely. And again, this is Chef John right off camera here, uh, talking about his wonderful food and uh, showcasing some of the lamb for us. Uh, just because you're, this you're hearing a voice off screen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I have a voice, I have a face for radio, so I'm over here. Ooh. <laughs> right? Ooh. Can I get you something else to drink? Uh, yeah, fill this yeah up. it's nice and mild. Luckily, since yeah. it's grass fed, can I, uh, um, yeah, try some more? Yeah, try some more. And it just, it just, it just, just, just got choice. breaking like, down. Everything oh my has God. been great so far. And that's cool. just the lamb that I've had so far. Yeah. Like, you, you gotta try that. You gotta try that. We still hold off on the other Yeah, yeah we still have other stuff coming out, of course. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Sure you. Not a problem. And we're thank still you. good with if you want to come in and, and film in the kitchen, we can tell them like that. Appreciate yeah. it. So thank you. So if you guys want us to fire the, like, really cooked items, Oh, no, not a problem. Yeah, no, feel, feel free and bring stuff out. There's, there's, as soon as you guys need oh, to, you we're good. Yeah, definitely. Oh my God, this is, ah, bro, this is, yeah, this lamb. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is, this is, yeah. It just, it just breaks down. And that's the, I only had the lamb by itself, not even like the rest of the stuff. Like, look, so, there's cabbage it, in it's, it. Um, it's done in almost like a pulled pork style shredded uh, with its long strands. Mm. And like, mm. it, it's based in the juices of the, of the pickled vegetables and the, uh, the cabbages and stuff. So like, Mm. The lamby flavor is subtle but moist and succulent. Oh yeah, um, you that get all the that's so good. The veggies still have a nice crunch, but it's absorbed the, the fats from the meat. Mm. Yeah. That. So we've been here once, and we didn't have any of this stuff. We had some other stuff, but it was just super good. It was one of those where like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know. But that pickled herring, though, that's where it's at for me. That right there makes me want to come back to this place more often now. And it, it, this is far from where we live. We live, like, a completely different part of Washington. You know, probably about an hour away, which is not horrible, but... Um, After yeah, the everything pickled herring, here is I'm coming. <laughs> nice and prepared a little ahead of time. So it's, it's more about the assembly of it. Um, mm -hmm. The deliciousness of life. And Your bread is good. The, the bread is soft, very but carefully thick. selected to be like the food balances it between the different flavor palettes. It really does, yeah. Um, well, it makes it so that like it hits your palate in the perfect way. It's not heavy, it's not light, but it's very refreshing, and it just brings this like this air of like you want to try the next thing. A more, yeah. You, you, it just it has this like come back, you know, flavor to it. It's just it's phenomenal, honestly. Well, before we continue gording ourselves on um, the Nord, the Nordic, the Nord um, yeah, board, which is the, the sea one and the lamb, 
let's get to the, the meat and the cheeses, which mm. is called the, the Board of the Gods. Ooh. Let me try the veggies real quick. Mm. Good God. Good God, that is amazing. All right. So before we camp, let's put this to the front. <laughs> Yeah, because we're, mm -hmm. otherwise we're just going to keep going on that. Yeah, that's, oh my gosh. Okay. So I got three more meats for you to try. Ooh. Can you oh, bring that down onto it? There we go. And there we go. Uh, got right, you. So you've got a spiced apple meat from Ethereal. That's down in Battleground, Washington. Spiced apple meat um, from Ethereal meats down in Battleground, Washington. Okay. And then you've got a bourbon barrel aged meat from Contrivance uh, Meadery. That's actually close to here to Seattle down in Tacoma by the airport. And then you've got a rose cardamom meat from Hierophant Meat. It's there over on Ruby Island. Ruby Island. Yeah. We actually do carry a lot of their stuff and uh, have some stuff of theirs on track. As well. Okay. All right, let's start with uh, the cardamom. Oh. So like, I lost a lot of my sense of smell when I was in the military, and it's only just now, eight years after, seven and a half years after I got out, starting to come back. And so like, being able to smell anything, and this has a great nose to it, yeah. it's such such a nice pleasure. Um, it's a very actually, smoothness to yeah, it. We're putting our meads in, um, these are little drams that we typically would put a scotch or a whiskey in, and the, the intent of doing that was for you to be able to still get a lot of your yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say the, the glass makes a difference. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Ooh, the smell. Yeah. What is this one? This uh, is a rose cardamom. And like, it, it's such a nice, subtle series of flavors. Mm -hmm. Definitely very refreshing. Does, summer. Very kind of earthy, botanical uh, flavors. But it's great for summer and spring, though. Yes. Like that's just it's yep. perfect. Another thing we haven't talked about is all of these are still meats, so they're in the 12 to 14 percent ABV, like a wine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, here, Fant does make a couple that we have on draft that are carbonated, and they're more sessionable, if you will, that are in you know, the 6 to 8 percent range. Mm -hmm. um, so before you leave, we'll give you a, well, this a sample of that. It's a ginger pear. They have. Uh, mm -hmm. That's awesome. And this was again the one from Battleground. That is from Ethereal Meads in Battleground, Washington. Is, uh, actually, no, that is the Bourbon Barrel. The Bourbon aged Barrel from Contrivance. So it's a traditional style mead, but just aged in a bourbon barrel. That one comes out a lot more sweet. Sweeter than the first. On this, well, the first actually had more of a, a than the sweet traditional smell. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I we've been seeing more and more of a trend of, of making things in bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think it transferred to meats? Do you think it? Because um, I, I was, you know, is it a fad, or do you think it's like this actually is an improvement on the the art of brewing? I think that aging anything it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what barrel it's in, but it's adding the, a, a lot more complexity to it, and you know, in this one in particular, you're getting a lot of uh, the oak and you know, the distilled flavors from yeah. the barrel itself, and um, it's not just in mead, but you see that a lot in beer with imperial um, aged beers, and even in Inokovit, there's a lot of uh, distillers out there who are aging um, spirits in other spirit barrels. Yeah. And what's this one? That is a spiced apple uh, mead called Mist. I just like apple in general, so the smell alone is just... And that, that particular mead we use, and we have one mead cocktail on the menu. Uh, Ooh. Called oh, Mead yeah. Your Maker. Uh, mead Your Maker. That is awesome. And that is the, uh, <laughs> the base of the, that particular cocktail. So your personal one that you guys have made for you? And oh. this one is my favorite. This, this one's pretty epic. So yeah. Those are actually both from the exact same area. Right. Here in okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Those and ones. Just got, and just, the name oh, of so the good. town in Washington is pretty badass. It's called Battleground. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that the history of that was the one Civil War battle that somehow so made it all yes, the way out? So. Mm. Yeah, it was like twelve or fourteen people on that between the two sides. <laughs> Man, um, yeah, that, this that's is fantastic. Yeah. This is my second favorite. Though. The other one, the one that you guys got is my favorite. This one, though, oh my god. Cool. Yeah. Bring some more water out for you, and we'll uh, we'll get the big pretzel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, sure. And then, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try. We're going to go ahead and try this uh, the sausages on the next smorgasbord plate here that we have. As you, as you guys have seen, like they're being super generous with us with with their knowledge and their time and like. There's just so many options when you come into here that's kind of almost overwhelming. 
Uh, so I, I, I would not say, like, you shouldn't take advantage of their knowledge about, like, okay, where should I start for oh, someone yeah. who doesn't know anything about me? Yeah, ask them because, you know what, it doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt to, you know, find out what the best thing is. And, uh, you know, the more, the more you know, the better it's going to be. So we're going to go ahead and try it first. Let's go ahead and get a sausage here. So we're going to try the sausages that they have here. I think they said so they make this in house. Okay. It's very light. I was not expecting that. Well, they, they did mention that you would get a lot more of the, like the, the cardamom and um, very light, refreshing yeah. flavor with these particular ones. Like you could, I could definitely see this having for like like breakfast. And it definitely, it's, it's so light. It's like it's like a refreshing, like breakfast sausage almost. Um, let's try the little berry sauce by itself. Oh, man. There's a truck here, so we're gonna go ahead and speak a little bit louder just in case. Um, Luckily he is not being too loud, <laughs> that's good. Um, so with that berry sauce, like you're getting some nice tartness to it, but also the sweetness. Um, and it, it it's a burst of flavor and then kind of like dissipates so that you can then taste whatever is beneath that you put it on. It's very... I love how you can have like chunks of the berry in it too. Yeah. That's what, that's what makes it nice. There's chunks of berry in it. So you get, you know, it's, it's fresh. It's not like, you know, like something that, you know, you just buy in a store. It's just, it's just a fresh berry. Yeah, because I, I just tried it with the sauces. Like you got the the berry dip and then like you could taste the sausage as it uh, rotated through the flavors. Oh yeah. And of course we have the cucumber salad again. I'm gonna take one of these cheeses and we're gonna try it a little bit on a cracker. And it's been sweating quite nicely. It's been a nice hot day so it's been you know like he said sweating beautifully profusely in a, in a good way. So I'm gonna try it a little bit myself. Mmm. Um Strong, dry in a good way, like a dry, oily, smoky. It's almost, it's definitely like a Parmigiano Reggiano, like a Pecorino. Um, oh. There's a little bit of crunch in it, like he was talking about, um, Chef John was talking about into it, but it's uh, very soft as well, almost like crumbly. Mm, in a cracker? Te texture. Oh my God. Uh, the, ch the crackers and the bread are very good choices. Soaks up any of the juices into the things. Still with a nice crack crackle sound, which, as he said, is kind of what they were named after, right? See? As, as you snap it, snap okay. it. Not already? Oh, crack. There we go. Um, definitely, yeah, I'm loving that. Um, that cheese, by far, so far good. I'm going to try the other piece of this one. This is a more browner one. Almost smells like a caramelized, this one. Yeah, it smells caramelized. Let me try it by itself first. Oh, wow. It looks like a... Subasa? Yes, please. It's a decently warm day. It's in the uh, mid-90s or so right now, so uh, gotta keep hydrated. So, yeah, caramelized, very almost like a like super a, creamy. Yeah, almost like a flan of cheese. Almost, it reminds me like of a, like of a flan. Reminds me of my grandmother's candy dish. In fact, not that level, super high level uh, caramel mm -hmm. intensity, but like the texture of it, um, the flavor pro profile. Here, let me try that the, with some... Um, with the cracker, it just tastes good. With some of the sausage. This is like a pate. Mm. What? It blends really nicely with the flavor of the, the sausage flavors. Love it. That pate is, is good. I'm very picky with pates. Yeah. Very meaty, very, not tart, but like, 
liverwurst is like a higher quality liverwurst is the yeah. best way to explain it for most uh, most people. Great flavor. If you like pate, if you like basically like crushed down meat. You know what? I'll try something Definitely worth funky trying. here. Get some of the the seafood one. Get some of the sea on might be good. Though. I don't know it might be a little bit meatier though. It it might be. I'm I'm. I got the pate with the caramelized cheese though. See if it overpowers each other. It does well. I think it might be an even because you have a strong dip with a strong pate. It's gonna be kind of an even flavor. Yeah, they mask each other too much. But now, the pate with, the, with either one of the cheese is actually really good. Because it adds, uh, it adds, especially the caramelized one, it works very nicely with it. And I'm going to try it with the white cheese. Pate with the whiter cheese, not the non-caramelized one. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, like you said, it's like a pecorino almost. So you have the saltiness from that, but a nice little greasy, like, snap of the cheese. You add that with the pate like the meaty flavor of it, it just makes it good. Now, if I had to choose the cheese, the orange caramel cheese is better with that pate. Well, that one have a, That cheese? The blue, blue cheese, I think you said, is that correct? Um, no, I don't think it's a blue, I think it's a similar to a blue cheese, I think you said. Mm. I could be wrong, I could be wrong. Of course, we'll, we'll fix that in the, in the... Yeah, we'll let you guys know. I like it, it's similar to a blue cheese. It might be a blue cheese, but it could be like a gorgonzola. There's a lot of cheeses that are similar to blue cheese, though. So this one has a very, like, strong flavor uh, to it. It is creamy. Um, Would you chase down with the cucumber? Chase down with the cucumber. Oh. It's cucumber. Helps kind of cleanse the palate a little so, bit. So, like, it's, it's really hard to, like, you weren't expecting it, right? So this is like a salami kind of thing? It's not salami though. I forgot what it was. Uh, he explained it, it was very similar to the salami, but more fatty. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like it's a heavier taste to it. Heavier taste than the salami. Definitely enjoy it. But between the three meats, I'd probably choose the sausage, then the pate. Kind of a half and half on that, honestly. Kind of half and half on that. I'm more on the pate side myself. Um, so like, these are two of the more popular items that again meant to be shared amongst two, three, four people. Uh, oh, yeah. And they, they really provide a, a, a balanced flavor profile. Uh, but if you were to pick just between one, one of the two boards, because they are a little expensive, like 20 something dollars, which one would you pick? Um, wow. Um, if I had to choose one to come and try, and I really had to like know, probably the seafood one. Honestly, I like the I like the mussels. I like the pickled um, pickled uh, herring. Yeah. It, just, it just has a good flavor to it. Oh wow! Oh wow! So let's take a look here. What we have here is their giant uh, pretzel. We got the Viking size pretzel coming in. Uh, it's a one pound pretzel made for us by Cafe Clatch here uh, in Lake City, the Seattle area. Uh, it's also on a horn hook that uh, our furniture guy, who's done almost all of the interior of our space, and he also made this pergola out here for us, uh, crafted these specifically for us to use for our pretzels. Uh, and that Viking size pretzels also come in all three of our house-made mustards. So you got an IPA Dijon mustard, Dijon? whole grain, and a Lincolnberry mustard. I, I'm a oh, huge fan of the Lincolnberry. I had that one before and I love the Lincolnberry. Dig it? Oh, excellent, thank you. Yeah, that, the Lincolnberry is awesome. Take, uh, take a little bit closer look, if you would, at uh, just the, uh, the horn here. Uh, yeah. Where? Just uh, at the craftsmanship right here. Oh, yeah. Of uh, the horn, you have the board, the metal bits that, that hang the actual um, pretzel. That's just all really good craftsmanship. Again, all local, and you know, just just that good. 
Uh, no. Why you spill things? Anyway, so we'll continue on here. Um, so I spilled a little bit of the beer, unfortunately, because it was right here where my camera's at. But we got it. No big deal. Um, again, just like. And they have everything made here, he said. Well, all all their stuff is local, either local or imported from like Europe. And so like all the like craftsmanship of the tables and all that stuff is it's somebody who's local to the area. So yeah, in between choosing between the boards, the seafood one for me personally, um, I just like how the seafood tastes um, and it tastes really good. Um, I'm very big, did the cheese come on this one or this one? Oh, no, it came on this one. But I like the caramel cheese, the caramel cheese with the pate. Um, it just it just has a flavor that's just really good. And it's one of those things like when you put pop it, the that caramel cheese in your mouth, you constantly have to run your mouth over the over the cheese, kind of like peanut butter. Yeah. And so like the flavor lingers, <laughs> really nice. But yeah, personally, I like the seafood one more, seafood platter. Um, if you can get both, get both. They're definitely worth trying. The seafood platter for me, it just has a amazing flavor. Um, the mussels, I love, but honestly, the pickled, I would, I would buy just a separate pickle platter by itself. Yeah. Well, I, even the veggies are pickled perfectly. <laughs> wow. And again, like, this place is designed to come with a group. Yeah. I know. So honestly, you probably could get both because most people come here with at least, you know, a few people. You know, so. And uh, they were talking about that they do a bunch of events. I th just based on poor rotation, it's well worth the go. Yeah. See what they do differently for those particular events. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. And, and go from there, man. Like, I'm going to try this salmon, this like little dip here, with some of this caramel cheese. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pairing. That caramel cheese with a cracker in this, that's the way to go. That speaks to my soul. <laughs> I like the mussels, but if I had to be honest, I kind of wish the mussels were um, pickled. That's how good like their pickled stuff is. So let's start digging into this big old pretzel here. Let's put this back here. Chunk number one. We're gonna move this over here so yeah. people can see it. It's all the salt is falling onto the table. So I'm gonna do the lingonberry because I like lingonberry. There's the lingonberry right here. Where I, on the other hand, will try the pretzel by itself first. Mm -hmm. I've had it before. It's amazing. Pretzel by itself is good. Can't go it's wrong. Very large, fluffy. You get the nice chunks of the salt in there. I like the saltiness of it. It adds up. It adds. A, it adds an extra flavor to it. You don't want a plain pretzel. It's just not. Uh, mm. Not the greatest. And even then, I can see this pretzel actually being good without the salt. But I like the lingonberry. It gives a little sweetness to the, the normal intensity of mustard. Yeah, which is what makes it. Just add that flavor. I, I, I like the sweetness because you have the sweet and salty of it. Is what makes it so good. You have the sweet, you know, the sweetness from the lingonberry. Then you have the saltiness from the pretzel, the doughiness, which just adds that extra, you know, combination flavor to it. Honestly, Skull's the place to be right now. I'm loving everything they have here. You really can't go wrong with it. It just has a flavor that's just phenomenal. I couldn't only. Like, it's hard to explain, like, how much this place lights up at night. Yeah, it, it is beautiful at night. This place is just super beautiful at night. It's just, like, they have lights all over here um, that they light it up. So it, and it, you can walk for a couple festive. blocks oh, yeah. from one place to the next. Oh, yeah. So, like, Easily. it's a great, once you find parking, you just keep walking and, and sample a little bit here and there. And the light, liveliness of Skull is, is just one place to definitely check out. So if you had to choose, which one's your favorite? Um, well, again, like, I, I like, I like the, the locks in, in the spread. Um, I think especially like when combined, the two are really good. Agreed. Agreed. Um, 
So like the Nord board is probably my favorite, but that that caramel cheese makes it hard to beat. There you go. Yeah, that caramel cheese is kind of it's kind of it's kind of spectacular, honestly. And then let me see. Uh, stay still for one second. Oh, there's a fly there. And yeah. So that's so far what we like at this. Check it out. Look at that. That's beautiful. Look at us. Hello. We look good. No, that's what we like at this current moment. 